Hi everybody. I'd like to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator to make a quick uh, color coordinated portrait using a few of the automated features. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. I have this Marilyn Monroe picture and uh, I'm gonna use Illustrator automated tools uh, to do a trace of the image and then to modify the color based on a uh, color scheme that I select. Now, uh, when doing this method, it's easier to work from a black and white picture uh, because what we want to do is to create uh, shapes out of the photograph that we can apply color to um, in, in the manner that we want. Um, also, keep in mind that this method is not going to give you a beautifully illustrated uh, portrait. Instead, it's going to give you kind of a computerized look um, that's kind of uh, creating you know, what it can out of the, the image illustrator thinking for you. Um, it's kind of like taking a photocopy of an image. It's, it's not perfect, beautiful, and precise, but it does uh, create an interesting effect. So let's try it out. First thing we're going to do is select the image uh, on our page. Um, if you're going to be doing this with your own photograph, what you're going to want to do ahead of time is convert the image to grayscale and then bring it into Illustrator and inside Illustrator, you can do these edits. So um, on the properties dialog box, what we're looking for is um, image trace. Now what image trace does for us is it allows us um, to take the image data, the pixel image data, and Illustrator is gonna convert that into solid steps of color. So watch uh, how this works. I've got the image selected, I look for the properties dialog box and I look for the image trace button. And for this uh, demonstration, we're gonna use the six color option. All right, so I'm gonna click six color and then Illustrator is gonna give me a little warning that it's gonna be thinking about this for a little while and just click okay. And then we're gonna see how it uh, builds the image. And this kind of demonstrates the difference between pixel imagery and vector imagery because what it's going to do is look for similar colors and create little areas of color of similar uh, pixels. And so it took all of that pixel data, converted it into just six gray tones. Now what we can do is select those different tones and colorize this image however we want. All right, so now that the image has been modified, we need to do something called expand. So if I click on expand over here in the dialog box, what it's gonna do is now complete the transition and convert that image into vector art. And now you can see that those shapes are editable and, and I can select them and modify them. Now, if I wanted to, I could use my direct selection arrow and click on a particular area and then open the color picker and select a custom color that I wanna use, click okay, and then modify that color as I go along. Um, but instead of doing that, there are some methods I can use here to uh, recolor the artwork uh, and get through it a little bit faster. One way to go is gonna be to use my magic wand now what the magic wand does is it will select vector artwork that is similar in color. So if I click on this gray tone, it's going to select all the pieces that share that same gray tone inside the image. Now the uh, magic wand is a little bit sensitive, so it might not isolate that single area in the beginning. You may have to adjust it. So if you have to adjust it, double click on the magic wand tool and adjust the tolerance it's that tolerance that sometimes creates the issue. So in this case, maybe you wanna dial that tolerance down to 10 or five and see if that improves uh, the selection result. You should be selecting just one area of similar color and not selecting too many uh, dissimilar colors. Otherwise the coloring method won't work for us. Next thing I wanna do is pick a color scheme. So Let's say I'd like to make her in kind of a pinkish uh, color scheme. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start by trying to create the swatch, kind of a, a main color swatch 
for the image. So maybe what I'll do is select kind of a pinkish color, get that color tone in my fill box. And then what I wanna do is go to the uh, window menu and I wanna use color guide. What color guide does for you is it lets you pick up color harmonies from um, a single swatch. So that pink swatch that's in my fill box becomes the main swatch color. And if I select the down arrow here on the color guide, it gives me all these different choices from complementary, split complement, triad, and so on, all the way through the different color combinations. So for example, let's say I wanted to pick analogous. And I wanted to use all of those color swatches. What I would do is now select the little plus symbol in uh, the palette, which would add that color color group to my swatches. So now what I can do is if I can click one of those, those areas with the magic wand and then select, let's say the lightest swatch in this group, it will then change all of those gray shapes to that color and maybe go to the next gray swatch and pick the next brighter color. Same thing on the next one, maybe pick that color go to the next darkest color and try picking, maybe say that one. Pick the, uh, the next tone, maybe a little bit darker shade. Last one. There may not be an exact color for me in this swatch group, so maybe I have to pick a different one. Or I can always go back to the color picker and make an adjustment on the fly. So that way I can slowly build up my color scheme just using the magic wand. And as long as I use that magic wand to select those groups, I can edit those colors uh, all at once. And it may take some experimentation to pick different colors that fit the artwork, the style you're trying to create. Um, but as long as you uh, use these different color selections, you'll be able to play around with the result. Another way to recolor your artwork is to select all of the artwork and then go to the edit menu and go to edit colors. And here we're gonna select recolor artwork. And what's pretty handy about this is it gives you a visual representation and then it shows you all of the color swatches being used in your artwork right now. And you can double click that and pull up a color picker. And visually, you can look at the swatch as it changes, click okay, and then update your artwork all at once. And this allows you to maybe have um, more control over your picture as you preview what's going on and, and test your, um, your view. You can also use the uh, color slider and it's gonna have a little circle here representing each of the colors in your picture. And you could move them around the color wheel and experiment with the different color schemes until you pick one it kind of fits, uh, fits your theme or what you're looking for. So I'll click OK when I'm done. And there I have that color scheme. Now I, I went pretty wild and wonky with this one, but I think you get the idea that by using those separate shapes, you're uh, creating that image and then modifying the color to match whatever color scheme you wanna use. All right, so that's a simple method for using the illustration uh, automated tools in Illustrator to do that. Of course, you can certainly embellish or enhance this with additional drawing with the pen tool or the other shape tools. Um, if you don't like that jagged effect, um, you may have to replace some of this artwork and remove it and delete it and redraw it with other shapes. Um, you could even try a simplification. Um, if you go to the object menu, I'm gonna select all the artwork go to the object menu and try um, maybe simplify, try one of those uh, path options and see how it kind of 
simplifies the path shapes. This might create a really weird uh, illustration. We'll see what happens. Move it all the way to the left and see if it simplifies enough for us. <laughs> Not quite enough. And look, it kind of broke it apart a little bit. I was afraid that might happen. But uh, it does give it a kind of a weird painted effect. But again, um, this is just the best, the best job Illustrator can do trying to scan and uh, create this vector art out of your uh, your photograph. Probably the best way to do it is for you to do it, figure out how to draw it. But if you need to figure out how to do it with the computer tools, this is how you do it. All right. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and you can use that on your projects. All right. See you next time.